Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between the team here of the New Art School and Design Didact Podcast. Our guest today is Gonzalo Ranieri. Welcome, Gonzalo. Hi, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Great to have you here. Fantastic. So tell us about you and your work. Uh, well, that's a long story. Uh, I'm a graphic designer. I uh, studied uh, in the pre-digital era way back in the 80s. So I've been uh, practicing design for the last 30 years, a little bit more. And after, when I was older, I decided to become an architect. So I studied architecture as well. And uh, then I went for a master's degree in uh, bioclimatic architecture and uh, environmental studies. And uh, right now I'm doing a PhD in uh, design. I'm, it's, it's almost done. I just need to uh, defend my thesis and, and that's it. So I hope to be finished that, uh, by February next year. And uh, besides that, I've uh, started teaching uh, design as well around maybe 23, 24 years ago. Uh, in pre-grad, I've done also some uh, teaching in uh, postgraduate studies, but uh, uh, not too much. And at the moment, I'm working at Universidad Finisterrae, which is a university here in Chile. We just became uh, part of a Cumulus Association, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, in order to start doing some uh, research in association with other uh, colleagues around the world, and uh, there I teach, uh, I do the final project uh, uh, model. So that means the, the, when they are ready to get out, they have to do this uh, uh, project, and I guide them. And I'm also part of the curricular uh, committee and the uh, scientific committee in the in the uh, faculty. That's very briefly what I do. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can expand this as well. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's 30 years, so. <laughs> so what is, what is your latest research on? What, what is your PhD on? Wow, that's, uh, I wish, uh, well, that's, that's long. <laughs> no, I started, uh, this story that started about uh, four or five years uh, when I was teaching, one day, I don't know, I, was, I had a new uh, course to give and I, I decided, well, I'm going to ask my students what is design. And for my surprise, each one of them gave me a totally different uh, answer. They, there was not one uh, of them who could uh, give me exactly or more or less the same design. For each one of them, it was different. I said, Wait, 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 wait. Here's something wrong. We're not doing something well at the school. We're not teaching them properly. What's going on? Uh, and I got, I got really worried about it. And after that, uh, about a week later, I've got a book, which is called More Than 100 uh, Design Definitions, which is in Spanish, a very small book uh, by uh, Gabriel Paz, uh, Sol Paz, uh, which is a Mexican. Uh, and he had uh, done a recopilation of uh, design definitions from uh, known uh, designers and from institutions, and they were all absolutely different. So I said, well, we're not doing a bad job at the university, which is a good news, but the bad news is that I really don't know what I've been doing for the last 25 years. <laughs> so I decided, I said, oh, well, I have to do some research in this, and the best way to do so was uh, going into a, a PhD program, so I chose uh, Palermo University, which is in Buenos Aires, just across the border here. In Chile, we don't have PhD degrees uh, given, so I had to look outside. Uh, the, 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 the good of uh, the program is that I could uh, continue uh, working here and living here. I have a family, which I didn't want to uh, uh, turn off from their uh, studies, from their work. So I had only to go twice a year for a complete month there, which was perfect for me. I could uh, I had all the time to keep on working and uh, be able to do the research at the same time. So uh, I started the program, and uh, after uh, two years, uh, or no, almost it's it's almost four years now. Uh, I'm I'm ready to do to do my my thesis. The thesis is basically. Uh, 
it, it starts from Santiago, Chile. I decided if I'm going to try to find out what is a design, I must do so from my own perspective. So I have to start looking around me, a, a point where a place where to stand and, uh, uh, and view my surroundings and see where I could. Uh, uh, research how could what would be my perspective actually uh, at the same time I've I, I knew about uh, 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 Barilla and uh, Maturana which they are two biologists who developed a theory about autopoiesis uh, and autopoiesis is uh, the unique characteristic of human, uh, of, uh, sorry, of uh, living beings, uh, which uh, differentiates them from what is not living. And autopoiesis, very briefly, is uh, the uh, characteristic that uh, living beings uh, reparate and reconstruct themselves. Uh, so they are constructing, we, we are constructing ourselves, we construct our, uh, our cells, we construct our social. Uh, uh, relations that's from uh, Luman, not from Maturana, but uh, we are, uh, and that's what characterizes us from uh, what's not living. Uh, a, a machine can't uh, build herself, uh, but a human being uh, can build himself and is doing uh, constantly. We, we, our hair grows, our cells uh, multiply, and uh, we, uh, we uh, plants grow as well. So I said, well. This is an interesting point because uh, Luhmann, uh, which is a sociologist, a psychologist, sociologist uh, uh, took this, uh, this idea and uh, 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 extrapolated it into sociology. And he, uh, they, they said that uh, human groups, human uh, societies, uh, construct the relations uh, from the inside. They decide what is uh, proper. They decide what is good. They decide, I said, well, maybe here we have uh, a starting point. And I said, what happens if I uh, take the sign, which is a predefined uh, uh, kind of predefined uh, discipline, and uh, put this lens on, the autopoietic lens, and uh, illuminate it. And uh, my... Uh, my thesis uh, turns it's uh, based on that on uh, taking an, ex an uh, internal uh, uh, perspective but with this autopoietic lenses internal because i'm a designer i can't uh, uh, neglect that and i can't uh, take the as a solo as a sociologist uh, perspective because uh, i'm not a sociologist i'm a designer and so every decision every a uh, view I make of uh, design is from uh, design. But uh, for doing that uh, and for uh, complying with what a PhD is, I had to uh, not take into account my uh, own perspective. I had to ask the community. So I started doing some research and I started going into literature. I started uh, I did some uh, research uh, via interviews where I got a, an incredible uh, response on LinkedIn, which was about two and a half years ago, that step. And uh, uh, I asked uh, the community some uh, very specific questions from a kind of checklist Maturana and Varela had done uh, to see if we were in presence or, or not of uh, an autobiotic ent entity. Uh, so I, I, I said, well, I'm going to do the same checklist, but uh, with like obviously I uh, accommodate it so that the language could be understood by uh, by uh, designers, mm -hmm. and I asked them uh, certain questions to find out uh, if there's was the if we could find the characteristics an autopoietic uh, system had on design, and. Uh, Based on that, based on the literature and based on uh, uh, further other uh, research, uh, I conclude that yeah, design is an autopoietic uh, 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 discipline. You can uh, uh, define that, yes, uh, 
design is uh, continuously constructing itself via new methodologies, new, new theories, new practices, uh, new relations. It's, it's in a permanent uh, growing, growth. Uh, and uh, and uh, some, the, the most important thing is that uh, uh, some uh, definitions came out in relation to uh, uh, design uh, related with uh, autopoiesis. And those are certain components uh, which I'm going to present now on my, on my, which are present uh, in my thesis. And uh, that's it, that, more or less. <laughs> how, how did you reconcile the fact that scientific methodology is not the same with design methodology? Ah, well, uh, because... Uh, when I'm doing the PhD, I'm doing a, a scientific research. Yeah. I'm not doing a design research. Yeah. So in that sense, I, I have from a design perspective, but a design research at the end as well. So uh, there's no conflict with that between them uh, because uh, I'm not doing a design project. I'm doing a scientific research yeah. a social, yeah. uh, uh, from social sciences, but I'm doing a, a, a research in that area. Yeah. With the lens of a designer and with the lens of a autopoiesis. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So tell us about how you got into teaching. <laughs> uh, way back in the 90s, beginning of the 90s, I lived in Amsterdam. I, before that, I lived in uh, Minneapolis for about a little less than a year. I did an internship there in a, uh, and took some courses in the uh, University of Minnesota. And uh, there I, that was somewhere around the 1990, 91, something like that. Uh, that's when I uh, uh, first uh, had a contact with internet, not the World Wide Web, internet, the plain text uh, thing. Uh, my brother was doing a PhD at the moment there. Uh, when I came back here in Chile, we didn't have, there was nothing going on with it. There were some things in universities going on, but not in, in mainstream. And then I went to, uh, to Amsterdam, and in Amsterdam, I had a, again, I lived there for three years, I had again uh, a contact with, uh, that's where I bought my first uh, Mac Classic, the uh, small one. It, it, it had two disks, one for RAM and one for uh, savings, so you had to like change the two disks. Yeah. Uh, then I got an external, uh, so I had two slots, which was great. Uh, and uh, in Amsterdam, I had a further contact with the internet. I have saw the first uh, web pages. And when I came back, uh, they have started design, uh, web design. Uh, internet has started already in Chile, and we had World Wide Web like for six months. And a company uh, asked me if I could uh, do them a web page. Uh, a jeans company, uh, which was a very trendy. I uh, said, "Sure, I can do it. Why not?" Uh, it's 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 new for everyone, so some someone had to take the 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 job, and uh, so I did the page, uh, the web page. I had to hire a, a, a program, a software programmer, and uh, I. Send the the, the 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 page to the uh, design biennale uh, of that year, and uh, it, it went very well with it. And uh, this uh, there was a university who called a friend of mine to do some teaching on multimedia because mm -hmm. they wanted to create these multimedia uh, classes. And uh, Andres, my friend, who's like a brother from him. Uh, he said, I can do this only if Gonzalo comes with me because uh, he's, he's the one who's, who's learning it. Uh, so that was like how I, came, I got into, uh, into teaching, uh, just by, uh, by chance. And right place, first, and you right told moment. You multi multimedia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it was a totally new thing at the time. Uh, so I had to create the, uh, the, the whole structure of the courses, there were no, so I had to start buying books uh, via mail. So it took about a long time to arrive to Chile. And uh, 
there was very little information, so a, a lot of it had to be created. Uh, uh, like what you could find was really what you could hear from a voice to uh, on voice to voice, and uh, and uh, I, I I started creating these courses, and for about two or three years until they were totally done, and then uh, then I was fired. <laughs> 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 so how do you find that uh, design education has changed since you started since I started as a designer or since I started as teaching educator, as an educator uh, well I think there's a basis which is exactly the same I think design has a certain uh, uh, aspects that uh, uh, continue some time, there's some kind of uh, frontier which defines us as a discipline, which I think it expands constantly. We're like an a, a exploding universe. And uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, limits, these frontiers for design, they uh, are, uh, every day they get a little bit bigger. Design is like a, a fago I don't know how to say in English, phagotic, uh, a system which is like facultating, uh, eating everything that which is uh, around it. It's like we're, we're going into medicine, we're going into uh, economics, we're going into social relations, we're going, it's, I think it's the fastest expanding discipline at the moment. That is a constant, I think, uh, uh, since ever. Mm. Uh, the different, I think, are the more than... Uh, uh, it's, uh, there are two things. One, uh, instruments we use, they're far more uh, uh, capable. Uh, it's like when I, had, when I started working, doing a, a, a print uh, original it took us a, a week. We had to erase and put and, and, and paste, and we had these special screws that you could uh, turn out, and it was really a, a pain in the neck. Right now you have a... a you have Illustrator, you have uh, InDesign, you have uh, incredible softwares. Uh, so that's uh, that's something that definitely has changed. Instruments, uh, the the uh, the machines we have, the three D printing, uh, those all that is our resources we have on on, on our uh, right there, so we can teach our students. Uh, immediately, there's uh, we have lost this intermediary. This idea of we do a, a sketch and we turn on the sketch, and the sketch has to be reinterpreted in order to, to do the prototype. And the, I think we can go very fast. So, design teaching uh, has to accommodate to that. Unfortunately, not everyone is ready to uh, assume this because we are. Usually teachers, like me especially, which I'm older, we are not very uh, accustomed and we are settled down and it takes us time to change uh, ideas, to uh, assimilate certain things. And in that way, uh, it's difficult uh, uh, for academia to incorporate that for many reasons. Uh, you want to be secure with your work. Uh, if something new comes, it's going to move your floor and uh, you're going to start shaking. And uh, this uh, uh, expert uh, position you have, it's not uh, going to be as expert as you expect because this new technology is something you don't know. And especially today, usually new generations, uh, they're uh, digital natives, so they are far more uh, suitable to uh, incorporate them than we as uh, uh, old dinosaurs, as I call myself in one of my videos. Uh, so I think uh, that's something that's uh, that's taking us time. Uh, uh, but do we really have something new? 
the the medium has changed, but the media has like, changed. Like to change the medium, but that doesn't change the message. That doesn't change. Well, the message I think it has to change as well because it, 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 and it, I think it actually has changed a little bit. Not a little bit, actually a lot. I don't know if uh, uh, you've probably heard about wicked problems uh, before. It's like we had this problem for uh, design was supposed to take charge of the cosmetic aspect of uh, a product. Uh, and it, and that's the original and uh, European conception of uh, design, or European and uh, North American conception of design, which is the one we have imported to uh, the, uh, South America, especially, mm -hmm. and um, I can talk for, for Chile and, and a little bit of for South America. Uh, but in the recent years, the, the message has also changed because uh, for what I was uh, just talking about, we have expanded. Design has expanded, has constructed itself into all new territories. Yes. So the message had to change and uh, we're not only uh, worried about if the, the thing is gonna be green or it's gonna be blue. Now we started thinking about, okay, what is the relationship between this object and uh, its environment? And uh, the group is who's going to use it. And how is the uh, manufacturer, the people who puts the clay into the machine, what is happening to them? Uh, so the message has got far more complex. Mm. Uh, the process has gone far more complex as well. Mm. And... Uh, I think we are in a stage, uh, and has to do something with what Luhmann uh, said, that we are we're going into more each time we, we get into uh, 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 narrower and narrower niches of uh, of knowledge, and you can see it in design. You can see the UX, UI, UP, UR, US, to T, UT designers. It's still it's still graphic design, and in it's way, incredible. Yeah. And in a way, now you have now you need like six letters behind uh, after your your, your name to, to say who you are. Before we were just I'm a designer, I'm a visual comedy designer. Wow, you have a speciality. <laughs> of course, of course, of course, of course. So uh, tell us more about the change. So you you were you were you were saying about something and from when you started until now, uh, have you seen anything else about the relationship of of practice of of hands on? Uh, training to to information. Yes, I think design is in a crossroad at the moment. Basically, uh, which other disciplines don't have it? Uh, medicine, for example, doesn't have this crossroad. They know exactly uh, who they are and what they do. Uh, lawyers know exactly who they are and what they do. Uh, engineers know what who they are and what they do. That's due, I think, to the power and the, uh, they have uh, uh, decided to have. Uh, uh, doctors, uh, uh, pediatricians, for example, they have managed so that society recognizes them as a... Uh, uh, as a critical discipline for uh, the evolution of humankind. Mm -hmm. so we want to have a better uh, uh, lifespan, we need doctors. Who can practice medicine? Doctors, nobody else. Uh, if you practice medicine without being a doctor, probably you're gonna end almost all countries in jail. This doesn't happen with uh, design. And design, I think, is one of the most important uh, disciplines at the moment. Anyone can practice design. You don't need a degree to practice design. But that doesn't mean you are practicing design. Why? Because tools have changed and they have become so efficient. Doing a, manipulating a photograph and thinking that when you are changing the colors and balancing the Y and doing a lot of things, you are doing design. It, it, everything, everyone can be a designer now. But that doesn't mean you're doing actually design and that doesn't mean you're properly doing design. So I'm convinced that designers, it's like you, you, designers of the world unite. <laughs> I think we should uh, press 
on, uh, on local uh, levels. So that design has to be uh, 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 practiced by uh, designers, not by uh, self-taught designers. Because I think there's a huge difference. Uh, basically due to the responsibility designers have to take in account of their actions. Mm -hmm. I think we are in a, in a turning point for society, not just for society, for, for humankind, for the total uh, uh, planet. We are in a, a critical situation uh, about the environmental uh, disaster we have created. And we as designers are uh, responsible in a huge uh, amount for, for that. Uh, uh, I think our actions have taken us to the point of where we are. And this has to do, I think, that with the idea that anyone can design. Anyone can do proto design, which is a term I found from an Argentinian, uh, which I can't remember exactly the name his, of this uh, uh, man uh, at the moment. But it's proto design is that uh, 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 ability to do something which is similar to design, but it's not design actually, because there's something missing. And this has to do with the components I, I, I told you I, I had found in my in my uh, in my in my thesis. Uh, there are there are certain things that designers do, and there are certain things that other people do, and they think, oh, "Look, I've designed this." No, oh, no, you didn't design that. You've created something. Yes, it's very interesting, but it's not designed. They didn't follow a design process. Mm -hmm. Maybe you follow some of the steps of the design process, but you didn't fo follow the design process. And usually, the piece that is missing in the puzzle between proto-design and design uh, properly uh, practice design, the, 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 the piece that is usually missing is research. Yes. Uh, uh, which is also a part which is usually missing by many uh, uh, trained designers, uh, licensed and professional designers of world. They just have the idea, boom, and they go for it. Uh, but it usually has to do with uh, with the the lack of this of uh, research and with the uh, which which uh, uh, conditions them to not uh, take informed decisions so mm -hmm. they uh, the many of the of the decisions they make in the process are intuitive which is good but after you've been uh, designing for uh, couple of decades, you can start being intuitive, which is a informed intuition as well. It's like your decisions uh, are based on your experience, not on, uh, on your personal taste, for example. Of course, of course. So if we could, if we could uh, change something magically in design education, if you could change something magically, would, what would you change or keep or do differently? Uh, where I'm working, we are, we are uh, exactly in that crossroad. Mm -hmm. We are starting uh, uh, curricular uh, uh, reform. Uh, we found out that exactly what we're doing, it's, uh, it's starting to have some serious... Uh, uh, we're starting to lack a lot of things. We're, we're missing... Uh, uh, Things we are not uh, adapting as fast as necessary. So, I think what we should start thinking about design, especially for curriculum, that it must be a, a flexible curriculum. Uh, because uh, if we just decide, okay, we're going to change all the courses we do for first year, for second year, for third year, for fourth year, and then we have a, or as long as you can do it, it's two and a half, it's five years. Uh, and we, we, I think we have to find a ways in which the design curriculum can be flexible. Uh, basically because... Uh, 
we don't know what is going to happen in three years more. We, we can't assume anything. We didn't know a year ago we we're going to be all locked down and we had to uh, go all online uh, teaching and uh, we didn't know our reality was going to collapse uh, totally and we had to reaccommodate uh, our teaching ways. Um, I'm teaching a, a, a final uh, uh, projects and it's it's been really difficult for me and for students as well uh, to, to accommodate to that new reality. And I think that uh, design teaching has to incorporate that uh, in order to make uh, a design uh, curriculum flexible, in order for students to start creating their own mesh, their own uh, mix of uh, knowledge within uh, a certain a frontier, a certain limits, which can uh, uh, define you as a designer as well, but with the flexibility to uh, accommodate into uh, diverse realities. And I think that is something we are uh, uh, we're, we haven't still uh, incorporated into design teaching. I think we are still very much into, into the certain... Uh, uh, we, we still uh, teach... Uh, History, his design history is, is, is teach uh, the same everywhere, uh, and I think we have to start looking at new realities. At maybe not new realities, actually, at the old realities. Uh, start seeing what did uh, uh, humankind do? Where we at? Where are we doing design uh, three hundred years ago? Where we doing design three thousand years ago? Those are questions we we accept certain realities in design. And we don't question them, which is something, uh, which is a paradox, because design is supposed to create uh, new futures. Of course. But for creating new futures, we have to uh, uh, question the past. Mm -hmm. If we don't question the past and we simply accept uh, the history, the uh, techniques, uh, the realities we are uh, confronted with, or the ones we have, uh, we have seen in the past, we won't be able to change anything. If we say, okay, that's the history. That's where design was started, uh, invented. That's where uh, this is how you do uh, design uh, this kind of object. For example, chairs are designed this way and you have to follow these steps to uh, design a chair. If we don't question that, we don't question the history, if we don't question our own discipline, we won't be able to make it grow. Absolutely. Uh, we're going we to establish certain values and certain principles which need to be the framework. And a lot of those designers that you say, the proto designers, do not have a reference or a framework or, or principles. No. That's, that's the whole no. point. But uh, as well, yeah. in, in many design education establishments, they're not teaching design uh, principles or values. So there's no, no framework, there's no reference. We, we can change things, but we need a reference point. Yes. We need, we need totally a, agree. an ethical framework, primarily. It's basically ethic. I think design, in the core of design, there's an ethic. And, and that has to do that. Uh, it has to do with this idea, which is a, 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 this human-centered design idea. Uh, but it's, uh, it's far more deep, I think. And it has to do uh, with ethics and with moral. Uh, moral in the sense not of a religious uh, preconception, but with uh, with humankind and uh, don't do uh, to others what you don't want uh, others to do to you. Don't do to the environment what you don't want the environment to do you back. Because if we harm the environment, the environment is going to react and we are going to suffer consequences and also all other species. Uh, and uh, it has to do with moral. It has to do with that. It has to do with uh, uh, this idea, which I was talking a little bit before about uh, moral has to do with knowledge. I think there's uh, uh, you can't uh, accept, you can't respect what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this has to do with uh, social uh, uh, 
agreements. Uh, we have to do certain agreements. We have, uh, if you look back in history, uh, you go into any religion, uh, way back into the ones we call myths, because myths are like second class of religions. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, from uh, Joseph Campos. I don't know if you heard from him. He's got a marvelous book, which is Myth and Religions. Uh, there, uh, there are certain agreements, certain social agreements, uh, which have been established. And those uh, agreements, they, uh, they put this frame you're talking about. They say, uh, we're not going to go beyond this line. We're not going to, for example, for designers, one, one, one agreement should be, we are not going to uh, harm uh, our environments. We are not going to produce something that harms other, uh, uh, a social group. Why should we produce things which in other countries uh, uh, produce harm? And designers, we have decided to simply, this is not my problem. That's a political problem of that country. If they permit it, it's okay for me. Uh, those agreements, we haven't done them uh, in the past. I think we are starting to understand now, and you can, you can see it, like uh, sustainability is uh, the... Uh, most important question designers and uh, uh, design teaching is uh, is trying to incorporate. You could see it in the beginning. In the beginning, you could see that there was a, uh, a course that, that, that was inside your, uh, your 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 schema, and there it appeared a small unit in that course, which was called sustainability. Then a course appeared, and then there was a line for sustainability, and now it's a must-have in the whole career. Sure. See, so it's, they, they like it's like the starts of beginning. Well, I think that must happen with. Uh, uh, I think I think sustainability is the most important thing we have to do now, with environment and with also with social. I think that's that's the the, the wicked problem design is in front confronted right now at, at this moment. I think uh, that is the most because it's the most critical thing we are confronting now. We don't we're, if if it's uh, fashionable, if it's in or if it's out, those I don't think they are really problems, mm -hmm. and I don't think also they are design uh, uh, they don't matter to design. They shouldn't matter to design. Those are marketing strategies. If it's fashionable or not fashionable, marketing is the one which is from the commercial department and uh, they are the ones who are uh, in charge of uh, convincing people that green is the new color for the year. And that, that that's not design, actually. I think design is... Uh, Design is going to take that in account, obviously. It's going to say, okay, I'm doing this, and this has to be accepted by the user, so they like this year, they, they have been convinced that they want the green, probably I should do a green, otherwise I'm going to go bankrupt. And uh, uh, But I think right now it's sustainability in all its uh, uh, broad uh, meaning. Brilliant, brilliant. How can our viewers and listeners best find you? Uh, I'm. Uh, I have a, a website, which is uh, bigbandthinking.com, and you can also follow me in uh, almost every uh, social platform as Big Bang Thinking. Also, and in YouTube, I've started creating some videos, which I have to uh, manage to make them a little bit clear. I still have some problems with sound, but we're, we're working on it. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, YouTube, it's Big Bang Thinking as well. So just put Big Bang Thinking anywhere and uh, I should appear. <laughs> Fantastic. Any last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? Have fun. Yeah. Have fun. Have fun and be a, be a, be a good person as well. Uh, I think that's more important than having fun. I think... Being a, sometimes you're gonna to have to leave your fun, your 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 pleasure on side just to be a good person. But 
if you can make it fun as well, it's better. That's. Thank you so much. Thank you for your for your time and this fantastic conversation. Lefteris, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here.